This is Spencer with the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Catherine Emmer. Okay. Got that right? All right. Uh, let's see how many titles I can list. Writer, director, star, producer of Life in Color. Is there other ones? I'm sure there are other ones. Um, edit editing, editor. Multi-title, we'll call you. How about that? Um, what was sort of the genesis for this project? It's a very, it's a funny story. It's a very relatable story for anyone who sort of, um, I guess I would say of our age bracket in terms of determining what you want to do with your life. So what was sort of the genesis of this project when you first began it? Um, I wanted to create work for myself and for people I believed in. And because I had never gone to film school, I decided I wanted to make a piece, my the first film, something I knew. So I, I wrote about topics that I knew about and that I wanted to talk about. And it was loosely based on some of my own experiences and frustrations with where I was at in life, having just turned 30. I can relate to that. <laughs> um, was there any thought process in terms of actually making this film because you were doing so many different things on it? Or was that just physically like, we're doing an independent film, I got to do all this stuff or else we're not going to get it done? That The former, yes. I, um, I knew that if I didn't do it, it probably wouldn't get done. So I didn't have time to really wish that I had more of a budget to have a, a larger staff of people to help me. So I just went for Forward and, and knew that if I wanted to get it done, I would do it myself and be okay with that. What was your sort of primary background, Camila? I mean, you do a very good job of acting it. Was that something that you had prior experience in, or were you just like, I want to direct this, but I guess I have to star in it as well, or what was the sort of thought? Uh, no, I, I primarily did this endeavor because I wanted to create work for myself as an actor. I grew up in Minneapolis and in the oh, theater scene there. I hear it's a very good scene, actually. I have a friend who lives up there. So yes, really Minneapolis, good. Chicago are great theater towns, and I grew up going to the theater and then doing it myself, and then I went to NYU and, oh, yeah, um, you nice. know, went to Tisch for acting, so I really wanted to have an outlet for myself as an actor and my friends who I believed in who weren't working a lot at the time, um, so it was an easy, easy choice to decide to make the film and put us all in it. <laughs> This, this is intended to be a compliment to your job of acting, but um, the character that you play is very unhappy with her place in life, and you clearly are a very upbeat, energetic, friendly person. Is it, what was it like to try and get in the mindset of that character? Because she, I mean, her life is clearly not where she wants it to be. Like, she's very unhappy. I mean, the circumstances that happened to her kind of like set it off even more. Like, what was it like to try and sort of get yourself in mind for that character and sort of do the performance that you really were hoping that character could be? I think that's a good question. I I think I first started with an energy and just focused on her energy and like pacing and how the character, you know, we all move at different tempos, but when you're not happy with where you're at in life, you know, there isn't necessarily an upbeat quality or much of an energy at all other than a low energy. Um, so I focused on that and then I had, I knew the story so well at that point, uh, just sitting with it as the writer, that I sort of knew what I wanted it to look like, but I think the important thing for acting, acting and actors is surprising yourself and when you're playing the scenes and you're filming them, be in the moment and find nuances that you didn't envision prior to the take. So that was something I always tried to achieve. So do you have any sort of like improv in your background in terms of like your prior acting experience or anything like that or? I, at NYU, and I specifically studied at a theater company, a wing of NYU called in Tisch called Atlantic, and it's David Mamet and Bill William H Macy's wow. theater company, and they're really good about versing us in the world of improv, and you it's mandatory to take a class in that. But I also felt really comfortable with Adam Lustig and Josh McDermott, who are the two other sort of principal actors in the piece. And so I think when you're familiar and comfortable with uh, other artists, performers, you sort of have a backhand and a trust, and I think hopefully that translated and helped as well. No, I, def I definitely think it did. In terms of 
the sort of like fleshing out, you know, things that you didn't see though, like was there much in terms of improving of like your own character or between the characters and just sort of trying to like hit those right notes or like what was it like in terms of as a writer were you trying to stick rigidly to a script or what was that process well when you have basically no money uh, you have very little time yeah. so i would always first and foremost try to um hammer out some takes that were um you know that were the script and then if we had time it was a real luxury and we'd do a few takes that went off script just to see if there was anything there we could implement in the editing process and and enhance the film with which there often was and and the challenge then became well do we really need this does this really move the story forward or is it just something funny that we get a kick out of um, and then also for the stand-ups I let them you know do their own stuff and and go at it because I knew I was less familiar in that world and I'm the first one to admit that someone else might have a better idea so I wanted it to be a collaborative process when it came to that one of the interesting things with multi uh, title people I always wonder what is the most difficult one of those aspects for you was it coming down to sitting down to editing it was it the writing of it the act, what, what was the most difficult um, problem for you with all the different hats that you wore uh, well I think being in the moment helped because I would just focus on the task at hand whatever that was for that particular moment or, or day I, I'm very impatient, so writing was tricky in the beginning because it's a process and it's never really finished. And for my personality, that can be tough. Uh, and I wanted to get it done as quickly as possible. And then editing, I had never edited before. Really? So wow. yeah, I, I learned very well done that. And yeah, okay. thank you. So I think each role presented challenges, but you come out of it learning so much and that's exciting ignoring like stand-up parts um, how difficult is it to sort of get that comedic beat right because it seems like it would be very easy to screw up you know timing like of the way you cut it or the way the joke is filmed or the way it's acted how difficult was it to get that what you wanted and what was that like for you in terms of it was it a matter of just repeatedly filming it and having lots of takes that you could edit from or what was it like in terms of trying to find that that tone that you're looking for did you show it to lots of audiences or what was right that? no we didn't have the luxury or I don't know if it's good or bad but we didn't show it to anyone before South by I trusted the script but I also trusted the people that were in the piece so I knew they were funny I believed in them and it was just a matter of getting out of their way which I know is cliche and a lot of people say but it's true and then yes I learned in editing cadence is always important and rhythm and finding if you hold you know if you hold on if you extend the shot several more frames, you may or may not get a laugh, you know. So it's going back and forth, but at the end of the day, I had to be my own gauge because, you know, we didn't screen it for other people. So. In a just sort of broader sort of context, I'm kind of curious, what were sort of your influences grip like what were the films that you loved as a kid what were the ones that you sort of were like if I could make any film it would be X Y and Z obviously you know budgetary restrictions limit you from doing like oh I can't make this to be like a 200 million dollar action film or something like right. that but what were the films that you enjoyed growing up and you know you would like to make if you could so. right that's a good question I mean, to be honest, I, I wish I was more of a cinephile than I am. I, I loved... <laughs> I, I, look, I love movies. I find the concept of cinephiles to be kind of pretentious. Yeah, like, I okay. feel like people like what they want, and you right. shouldn't be judged okay. based on what you want. Well, I probably broke the Uncle Buck VHS tape. It's a fantastic yes. movie. And um, obviously, of course, Home Alone. And so you're a Hughes fan? Hughes fan. Are you going to see the Breakfast Club 30th anniversary? Oh, I should. I haven't even put that in my Oosh, schedule. But think about that. Yes. Yeah. I also love Woody Allen. I love performance-based films and um, verbiage. I love words and com how people communicate. Do you like uh, Clerks? 
For instance, Clarks, do you remember yeah. like all the words and stuff that were spread out through that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I and then when I got older, um, the Duplass brothers, I love their oh, work. Fantastic. And yeah. Louis C.K. What he's doing on his show, and Lena Dunham and um, Ed Burns, all these people are are artists I can relate to and admire. So here's an interesting question for someone from that perspective, and this is purely from a curiosity standpoint. Um, I like Wes Anderson, mm -hmm. very good director, yeah. but my favorite film of his is Fantastic Mr. Fox okay. because it's the most unique film he's done. He tends to work in a very specific area of, you know, comedy, drama, right. sort of quirky characters and whatnot. And I always wonder about, you know, um, if he did like a horror film or if he did an action film or whatever, if he did something different. Right. Is there any sort of thought from your perspective of like, I want to try and do something that's going to really push me in terms of like, this is what I like to do, but right. if I did this, it would actually challenge me more as a director or an actor or whatever. Do, you, do you think about that kind of stuff in terms of projects you do? Absolutely. And and the idea I have for the next, uh, next one is completely different genre than Life in Color. So, and I think the challenge in it is going to be how do you entertain an audience with something darker and that's still grounded. Interesting. But, darker. As yeah. in like horror dark or dark no. black comedy <laughs> dark or what? Um... You can't, you, kind of, without spoiling it. Yeah, too. kind of neither. Um, like film noir, literal darkness? No, not genre specific, okay. not uh, strong in genre, but um, just more Very of a drama, but more of a drama, like Half Nelson. I loved what they that did with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there, it's life, so there can be comedic elements, but I'd love to find how to entertain and tell a great story with having less comedy and, and more more darkness. Are you hoping to continue on and do more like um, directing, writing, acting, or is there one area you would, I mean, obviously, as you said, you're doing this to give yourself more opportunities. Is there one area, though, if you could um, uh, focus on a specific thing, you'd be like, this is what I want to do most, like... What, like what? As you head into this film, basically, what are you intending to do on it? Is my point. Well, my first passion is acting, so I hope to you always definitely act in the yeah. next one. Okay. <laughs> I love I love acting, um, but I think all of it. You know, I can't sit still, so I <laughs> if if nothing's coming my way, I'll just create my own stuff, and and I love that. It puts you more in the driver's seat and doesn't make you feel ever feel um, hopeless or down about it because because you are in control of what what you get to do in a, in a sense, you know, if you look at it that way. Is it... Okay, so is this your, this is your feature debut, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, how great of a challenge was that to approach, just from a logistical standpoint, I mean, you know, a short film, I don't know, a couple days, three days, whatever, but to go from that to a full-on feature in terms of getting the finances to carry you through it, to try and get it into places like South by Southwest, what was it like as sort of a first-timer to go through that process? Um, I think I went into it not knowing very much about it, which I think was to my benefit, because if I knew really, if I knew how much work it would be and stress and struggle and ambiguity at times, I'm not sure if I would have signed up for Maybe it. Maybe the nannying thing sounds like a better alternative. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm very happy I did it, but it's a lot of work, so taking it moment by moment and I had someone, I had produced a short and acted in it and, you know, we shot it in an afternoon excuse me, essentially, or a day. And my boyfriend said, oh, well, you can make a feature, just extend the work you did for the short by like 25 days or, you know, however much. No problem, need. just yeah, 24 months. exactly. <laughs> and I sort of tease him about it, but no, it was the greatest gift and I'm so glad I did. But knowing that it's a lot of work, it's all about organization and surrounding yourself with people who knew more, know more than you and who can help you and collaborate with you and are excited as excited about it 
as you are because at the end of the day it's not for a paycheck so are you implying you're not going to become rich off of this movie is that <laughs> no I mean look, knock on you, wood I don't yeah, know if this is actually wood but you never know what's going to happen but and up front yeah you do not do you don't have money to spend or to make on it so you really do it for the love of it and then it's out of your control in a certain in a certain way what happens with it financially or otherwise but at the end of the day if you can make something out of nothing that you're really proud of isn't that the biggest reward that's pretty fantastic <laughs> So the film is Life in Color. Um, do you have any other details about its release from here? Or do you have a website that people can go to check out and keep up to date on what's going on? Yeah, we have um, a website, lifeincolorthefilm.com. And we have a news page up there and press. You can see reviews and such. And yeah, we hope we hope to take it to more festivals. And as of now, that. We don't know what's going to happen, but I hope more people can see it. Yeah. Point. Um, all right. So besides, was it Project Black, as we'll call it? Um, are there any other things you want people to keep their eyes peeled that you're working on, or do you have a Twitter, or Facebook, or anything that people can follow to keep up to date on your happenings? Uh, well, I, for the life of me, can't figure out Twitter. So I don't have my own Twitter. The film has a Twitter. Um, but uh, I have my own web page where I just update what I'm doing. And I don't really know. I, I don't know what the future holds per se, but I hope it's filled with fun stuff that I can learn I have from. no doubt it will be. <laughs> Uh, they, they say uh, you get back what you put in, and yeah. so you seem very upbeat, so I find it hard to imagine you won't get some good well, stuff thank back. thank you. Um, thank you so much. I wish you best of luck with the film and everything that follows. Thank you so much. can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. It's tight. Don't even try to buy the summer style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels... It's all right.